uh, on my desk at the moment, well, literally, uh, obviously there's just my laptop and a couple of screens. Uh, COVID was very good at meaning that I've got a clear desk policy <laughs> and I've just stuck with that. Uh, but work-wise, um, so I suppose the first thing is a bit of uh, advice in relation to Hillside, which is uh, the, the Supreme Court judgment that has been there's a lot written and talked about that already, uh, but I think people have generally got the idea that you know unless there's physical incompatibility between planning permissions, um, then you know there'll, there'll be a way forward. Um, so that's that, that's probably the one of the things. Um, the others uh, include uh, development consent order work. Um, so I'm lucky enough to be dealing with a couple of those at the moment, including the implementation of those. Um, it, I suppose also on there a bit of training for clients, uh, biodiversity net gain, uh, which is something that's coming in later on this this year. I've done some for developer clients, and then we've got uh, another training session down in our London office actually on the twenty uh, sixth of April. So there's a little plug there, um, and and then finally probably also a bit of contentious work as well. Uh, so a few planning appeals and a judicial review just to keep me entertained. Currently, what's keeping me awake um, would have to be my children. Um, in terms of other things, uh, um, I, I think I'm, I must be a deep sleeper or I'm a good sleeper. Um, in, in terms of current climate, I mean, I think we've got to the stage where there's always something coming along. And if you're worried about everything, uh, you really wouldn't get any sleep. Um, whether we've moved from COVID to a crazy mini budget to a potential recession or a war, um, you know, I think we're just waiting for the next thing, aren't we? Uh, so, I, I, you know, there's plenty on my desk to keep me entertained and uh, not leave me too worried about that. <laughs> Coming up next in the housing sector is a review of the MPPF. Um, there's a consultation out at the moment that closes on the 2nd of March. So that is imminent. We're told to expect, expect it in terms of one of those usual government targets of, of spring uh, 2023. So there's some reforms coming in there. Uh, there's also the uh, levelling up bill uh, that's making its way through, so it should become an act. Um, how quickly that comes in uh, is yet to be seen, but that's got a number of reforms in it. Everything from uh, introducing a charging levy, so a bit of a rehashing of um, the community, community infrastructure levy, um, changes to enforcement dates, um, greater powers for local authorities to require planning permissions to be completed, etc. Uh, so there's a bit definitely coming in there. Uh, there's quite a bit affecting the housing sector generally um, that some would say is probably a bit burdensome as well. Um, so you've got biodiversity net gain. Uh, proposals are due to be coming in sort of towards the end of the year. It's November. Um, providing the government keeps to its timeline. Uh, it, that is reliant on some guidance coming out from DEFRA. Uh, last time I checked, it hadn't been published, um, so we'll have to see what, whether that comes out in order for them to maintain that time scale. There's also ongoing issues in terms of uh, nitrate neutrality, and um, I think just just sort of positive uh, planning in terms of biodiversity net gain. Um, so they're definitely the key things. Had we been filming this probably a, a year ago, then I'd have said a new housing minister, but um, hopefully we're past that. Um, albeit, I suppose, within the next 12 months could be an election, so we'll have to watch this space. Next big opportunity, I think that's a really good question. It'd be interesting to see what you know um, developer clients would say to that as well. But personally, I, I think um, I've mentioned biodiversity net gain. Um, that's coming in later on this year. And I think it's this whole piece around environmental uh, and sort of uh, positive or, or, or nature positive planning. Um, I think the BNG stuff gives you a direction of travel. Previously, planning was all concerned with um, doing no harm or consuming your own smoke. And now BNG requires you to deliver a, a positive improvement in biodiversity, you know, the plus 10%. And you're going to see that come in, I think, with, with other areas as well. In fact, there was the um, London Air Quality Positive Guidance, which was just published recently, um, which is about trying to improve air quality. Um, so you can see how these things are starting to trickle down into other areas. And I think that's a theme that will continue. Um, in terms of for lawyers and what's coming next, so the big opportunity, um, I suspect it's probably more revolving around AI. Um, we've you know, probably seen a lot in the press uh, that there are improvements being made there. And I think in terms of the benefits it can provide in terms of time savings when that comes in, um, that's probably the next one. But how quickly these things are coming in 
remains to be seen. In terms of what I love about the job, um, it's probably going to end up sounding like an interview question, isn't it? You know, but um, <laughs> it has to be the diversity. I, I'm very lucky. You know, I said earlier on in terms of what was actually on my desk, um, I've got the full spectrum of planning. Sometimes people see planning as a bit of a niche area, but actually, when you look at it, and it covers everything from major infrastructure right through to you know affordable housing and everything in between and there's also contentious and non-contentious work that's what i probably enjoy most um in terms of uh, um what, what sort of fires me up it's probably actually when you get a good result for a client um, or you work with them to strategically deliver a solution that's probably what means i keep coming back for more